the 6.5 Summit, it's back. And unsurprisingly, we're focused on AI. And listen, we love infrastructure. We love chips. We love the build out. We love agents. This theme of this show this year is all about getting value out of that. And you know, we're talking about something that is special in my heart. And that is essentially what, what we call in More Insights and Strategy, uh, the hybrid cloud. Um, innovation can happen anywhere, right? It can happen in the public cloud. It can happen in the private cloud. It can happen on the industrial edge. Uh, and we are going to talk about how we light up these uh, capabilities. And it is a pleasure of mine to introduce Rohan, who essentially runs product for Google Distributed Cloud. Welcome to the show, Rohan. Thank you for having me here, Patrick. Yeah, and you know, it it uh, I made the bet probably 10 years ago as a company. I was a big believer in the public cloud and, and all the benefits from it, but I was like, you know, this uh it would be interesting, uh, really interesting to have um a, a cloud model that was on premises and you have delivered it. Thank you. Thank you very much. But let's drive in. Let's let's kind of draw go high level here. What are some of the um, the macro trends, um, more importantly, the business imperatives that, that are accelerating uh, the adoption uh, of AI and in particular, uh, AI on premises? Absolutely. So we know that Gen AI is having an impact everywhere, right? whether it is use cases like coding, customer care, improving employee productivity. AI and generative AI in particular is changing every business operation and approach that, that we have seen. But for a lot of organizations, especially those dealing with sensitive data, with regulations and compliance, or even organizations that require extremely low latency, this Gen AI revolution is kind of a little bit of, you know, feels a little distant because they can't really leverage public cloud for the reasons that we just talked about. And they have the same use cases that we just uh, mentioned for everybody else. And we want them to be able to leverage the power of Gen AI, but do it in their own data centers, in their own premises on-prem. Yeah, and what I what I really appreciate is you're giving customers choice. You wanna run it in the big cloud, you wanna run it in the private cloud, uh, it, it it's your choice. And I also saw some disconnected versions uh, as well that are that are that are very uh, very interesting. So um, let's talk. Uh, I get in front of a lot of C CIOs, CTOs, and CXOs, and you know, I'm always cataloging the, hey, what, what are the impediments to scaling uh, uh, AI? And, and I'm curious, from your point of view, what are you seeing? What are the complexities? What are some of the challenges that that they're uh, sharing with you? Yeah, and I'm going to speak now specifically on challenges for on-prem AI. Okay. I'll start off with the fact that deploying on-premises AI is expensive, time-consuming, and complex. And, and why is that? It's primarily because, A, you're likely dealing with kind of data sovereignty and regulatory compliance. Stringent rules based on the country that you're in can absolutely stifle AI adoption and really impact the customer experience. Then you have the complexity of AI infrastructure. As you said, this is a hybrid world and customers have to figure out by themselves which AI apps can they deploy on-prem? What technologies can be used in cloud? What can be done in a hybrid way? It's yeah. extremely complicated and it's not obvious what works where. And lastly, let's also acknowledge kind of some of the cloud exclusive frontier models. Most you know, Gen AI vendors out there have made their models available and accessible only through the public cloud, making kind of on-premises deployment a huge challenge. Right? And Google took a different approach. Google Cloud took a different approach. We announced the availability of basically the best of Google Cloud AI on-prem in April at our yeah. Google Next conference. And this is basically including our best-in-class large language model, Gemini 2.5, that will be made available and delivered on-prem using our Google Distributed Cloud portfolio. Yeah, I was there. I was in the seat. I wrote, you know, I have a full team of analysts, but that was that was a note that was a note that I took, and then I went to Dell Tech World and I saw it again. It was super, yeah. I was super, super exciting. So, um, where are you seeing 
uh, the highest levels of interest. You know, we talked about, I think you had mentioned, uh, you know, security, uh, latency, or maybe there's just control that, 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 that people want, or, or there are certain uh, regulations. Uh, where are you seeing the, the pockets of interest the most? Yeah, and before I talk about it, I do want to give a call out to some of the partnerships that you that you just mentioned. So Google is working with NVIDIA. In fact, Jensen was the one who did the announcement on this at Google Next, and we're thankful about that. Uh, Dell is a huge partner. So we're working with kind of industry leaders to make sure that we can bring this AI revolution on-prem. And then coming back to your question, I think we're seeing this across the board in multiple different industries. Let's start with maybe retail and quick serve restaurants, right? They have use cases around adopting vision AI and conversational AI to make their customer interactions more personalized and efficient. They also want to make in-store processes more efficient. So we're, we're working with some of the largest kind of quick serve restaurants around the world to deploy AI on-prem. And for them, it's less a regulatory challenge. It's more a latency and survivability issue where they have to make sure that their restaurant or retail store stays up and running, even if connectivity to the public cloud goes down. And as you know, right. many of these restaurants are in maybe remote locations where the internet connectivity is not always the best. So that's one. In public sector, we are seeing huge traction, again, for compliance reasons, whether it's a public safety use case, like emergency responding, uh, or it's use case around sensitive financial data. Uh, we have a deployment in Luxembourg as an example where the financial regulator is deploying on-prem AI to look at uh, financial fraud detection use cases. Yeah. And another example is manufacturing. Right? There is assembly line worker safety that AI can help with, with vision AI, uh, or profit process efficiency in you know, figuring out how to improve semiconductor yields with predictive AI tools. So basically, we're seeing this across the board, um, and you know, really customers are getting a huge value from this on-prem AI technology. Hey, you know, I was in. Uh, I, I I went to Davos uh, this year uh, to to meet with folks. I was really trying to get a read on AI and investment. Uh, everybody, you know, in the world comes there, but I wanted to get a read from uh, folks um, primarily in Europe. And there was a lot of talk about, hey, I want my own sovereign cloud, and I want it for I want it for for AI. Is this applicable? Is your technology and offering apl applicable? Applicable? I'll get this out uh, to the sovereign uh, AI cloud. Absolutely, and I'm going to pull back a little bit and talk about Google's approach to sovereignty and how the on-prem piece kind of ties into it. So we've been working on developing sovereign solutions for a decade or close to a decade. I didn't know that. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, and we've been iterating on this over the last almost ten years. We recently announced kind of an updated view of our portfolio on sovereignty, and I'm going to talk about that right now. So we believe that you know customers have the choice, and we are providing them with the right level of controls and technologies to enable the level of sovereignty that they need. So on Google Public Cloud, we have Google Cloud Data Boundary. It allows them to control where in our public cloud regions their data is stored and processed. It allows them to store and manage their encryption keys. And those encryption keys are always in their control, which can help customers meet specific you know, data access and control requirements. So that's one uh, sovereign solution that we offer. The other one that, and specifically in Europe, is called Google Cloud Connected, where we work with a local partner and we basically deploy Google Cloud in an independent, dedicated region. Yeah. As an example, Google Cloud has partnered with Thales uh, in the last four years to build out a trusted cloud solution. It's a, it's a, it's a partnership called Sons for Europe, and that's something that we've seen a lot, getting a lot of traction now. And then, last but not least, we do have a air-gapped on-prem option for a fully standalone solution that does not require connectivity to any external network or to the internet. And this is really tailored for customers in the national security space, defense, intelligence, where they have the strictest of data regulations and residency requirements, and it can be deployed at a relatively small scale or a very small scale. And this can be operated by a local partner, by Google themselves, if that doesn't break sovereignty rules, or by a, the customer. Right? So we are offering basically a choice of sovereignty solutions depending on public sector requirements. Yeah, when I 
when I learned about the air gap solution, I, I, I said to myself, wow, this has got to get Google out of that comfort zone uh, and was probably very difficult uh, to yeah. pull off. Choice is, uh, is, is important. Um, and I think just the fact that you're, you're offering these things is a, is a, a really good message that you're sending uh, to folks that, you know, quite frankly, you can do it like you want to do it. You want to do it in, in the public cloud? Great. You want to do it on-prem? We can do that too. So, and I think you've been um, making pretty massive infrastructure uh, uh, investments across cloud regions, across zones, network edge locations and pops. And um, I, I am amazed too at, at your laying cable underneath the sea uh, yep. to, to increase that performance between data centers. Yeah, and thank you for calling that out, right? At this point, our infrastructure footprint has scaled massively, right? We are now available in 42 public cloud regions. We have 127 zones, 200 plus network edge locations, and you know, 33 subsea cable investments. And that basically spans global infrastructure. And, and, and I believe that we are uniquely differentiated in this space. Yeah, you do actually have the largest data state when I, you know, I put the Google Cloud plus the consumer uh, stuff uh, stuff in there that I know a lot of people uh, don't don't uh, don't don't talk about. So, hey, I want to talk uh, about something pretty pretty exciting to me. I mean, looking looking out over the next five to ten years, not asking you to you know, pre-announce uh, what you're doing here, but more about what are the trends and the capabilities that, that you're monitoring and looking at for uh, on-premises AI? Yeah, so I think let's start with people think about, when they talk about AI, they typically talk about models, but models are just one part of the overall AI stack. Google is bringing out the best models in the industry, whether it's a foundational large language model like Gemini 2.5, or there are task specific models. So we're gonna constantly innovate and come out with the best in class models with some of the largest context windows. Gemini 2.5, for example, has context windows that are the highest in the industry, going from 1 million to 2 million. And that just allows customers to process a whole lot of data in a single query. But we're gonna see these models continuously learn and evolve and continue to get better over time. This is clearly an area that we are focused on. But outside of models, it's really the AI platform that we're really excited about. Like Google has created best in class serving, fine tuning and training platforms. So you will likely take some of these models that, that we build and then you will fine tune them to make them work better in your environment, in your industry. So you're gonna look at how to refine their understanding, uh, you know, improve their performance and adapt their behavior. And when, when it comes to on-prem, you're going to use your local data to train this model based on your use case. So that makes it tremendously exciting. This allows customers to kind of operate with greater autonomy uh, and, and really the, the sovereign use cases we talked about. And beyond models and the AI platform, it's the agentic AI applications that are really going to be differentiated, right? Ultimately, models and AI platforms are a way for customers to create agentic AI tools. Sometimes we will provide agentic AI applications directly to customers on-prem. In other cases, they will build their own tools. And a really interesting example of an agentic AI tool is our recently announced agent space search on Google Distributed Cloud. Now think about the problems with search. I mean, actually let's think about Google. Like Google is good at many things, but what made Google Google was Google search. So think about bringing the power of Google search on-prem so that customers can really search through their own enterprise data. And today that enterprise data is completely siloed with multiple tools across teams. And we are bringing the power of Google search with large language models into on-prem deployments. And this is one of the agentic AI tools that I am personally really excited about. And when we have shared this with customers, they've been super excited. Yeah, I'm still waiting for Vertex AI. No, I'm just kidding. Well, um, we do have some Vertex AI capabilities. So um, as part of the AI platform, 
uh, a few of our key Vertex AI capabilities are available on-prem, including things like you know, language translation from uh, 200 plus languages, as well as speech to text. Uh, so we do have some elements of our Vertex AI platform on-prem as well. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing uh, with us kind of what the future uh, might look like. And, you know, when I step back and, gosh, I'm leaving next two weeks from now, I'm going to be with a room full of CIOs. And, you know, they just keep perpetually telling me, like, I'd, I'd like some choice, but wouldn't it be great if I could closely partner with somebody uh, who's very strong in the public cloud, and I'll call it the the on-premises uh, AI cloud that I can I can bank on. And um, what you're pull, pulling together here, I will say, and as an analyst, I always need to watch how I say it or my excitement. But I, I really like what you're what you're putting together here. Thank you, Patrick. We appreciate that. We want to bring the best of Google Cloud AI to our on-prem customers, and we're going to continue to keep innovating across the stack. Yeah, exciting. Thanks for coming on again. Thank you so much. Yep. So thanks for joining us here in the Intelligent Edge Spotlight of the 65 Summit 2025. Stay connected with us and our social media platforms and check out the new website, 65media.com. Uh, stick around. We've got more AI insights to come. Thanks a lot.